get you and your girlfriend together, honey. I got her. You'll be writing letters to her, staying right there. I was 18 years old when I had April. April was born on May 14, 1975. She was born before the doctor even got to the hospital. I remember she had all this long black hair and I named her April Renee. Well, you know, the nurses, they would bring the babies to the moms in the room, you know, for feeding and changing and just bonding. And I remember standing at the door and waiting for my little black haired baby to come to me. Well, they brought her to me and I wouldn't let them take her back in the nursery. So when I got out of the hospital and everything got home, April was just a bundle of joy from day one. I remember times when she would uh, get my driver's license and put them underneath her crib mattress. I said, April, what are you doing with mommy's driver's license? She said, mommy, I just wanted to sleep with you. And she just giggled and then she would hide underneath the sink in the kitchen playing hide and seek and scare me. She loved to go and play with her cousins at my mom's house. All the kids gathered up there and they would just play all day. All my brothers and my nieces and nephews and my sister, we were all up there making the snowman and April was just laughing and having fun and throwing snowballs. Then came her preteen years. She was having some problems in eighth grade with a girl and they fought and everything. But then her and that girl became friends. She uh, went over to Johnson Central as a freshman and she had a lot of problems over there. The girl didn't like her, threatened her, beat her, followed her around, just made all kinds of nasty comments and it would hurt April's feelings because April was a kind soul. It was also helping my sister with her little handicapped baby. Matthew was born with Schinzel Gideon syndrome. He couldn't talk, he couldn't walk, he couldn't see, he couldn't hear. When she was 15 years old, things changed. She wasn't April no more. She, her old demeanor changed. She wasn't outspoken to me like she normally would. She went to put blankets over her windows in her bedroom. Somebody would call her phone all hours of the night and she would say, don't answer it. When April left the house that night, she was just laughing and, and carrying on. She was excited, it was prom night. Her and a couple of her friends were gonna go out and ride through the Mayo Plaza, local hangout for all teenagers, and probably go to a houseboat party at the Paintsville Lake. When she left that night, she had on a pair of jean shorts, oversized t-shirt that said P.E.P.E. -P -E on it, her case Swiss tennis shoes and her Louis Vuitton purse. Timmy was like the big brother to all the teenagers. You know, Timmy's got a truck, Timmy's got loud music. Call Timmy, he'll drive us around, you know, play the music. He's like a big brother. Then that night, May 19th, 1991, about 1 or 1.30 in the morning, I knock on the door. I opened the door and the sheriff was standing there in the corner. And they just come out and said, Sharon, there's been an accident in April, she's dead. And I just looked at them. I ran through there and I opened April's bedroom door up and I turned her light on and she wasn't there. I come back through the house and I told them, I said, no. Couldn't be. And they said, yeah, I said, she drowned at the lake. And I went into shock. 
I went out on my back porch and I looked up in the sky and it was calm, clear, and I got the feeling of comfort, immediate comfort. It was hard to, to go through that. It was hard to make the funeral arrangements. I went into post-traumatic stress. Bits and parts of it I couldn't remember back then. My mom filmed the funeral for me so that I could see it later. Over 500 people, families with children, signed her funeral home book. Her body was lined in a casket with red roses all the way around there. They wrote notes to her, put them in there with her. I don't remember the funeral itself. To this day, I don't. A lot, I brought that a lot. And life's just not the same. Christmases and holidays, her birthday. I hear a song, one that she would like, smell perfume that she would wear. I didn't get to see April graduate and have a career, a job. I didn't get to see her married. I have no grandchildren. I don't know what her life would be like. And here I have pictures. All I have left is pictures and videos. Pictures of my April. Pictures of her and her brother. Eighth grade graduation pictures. April's first grade picture. We never had much, and my sister Sharla, Matthew's mom, bought her this little dress so she could have a new dress for a picture day at school. It's hard to describe. I know she'll never be it back. And I see her, I see her life leading up to what happened. Very emotional to look at these pictures because she's smiling in every one of them. And in that smiling face, you can see her compassion and kindness for others. This one especially, she went in December of 1990, she went to visit her grandma for the first time, her biological grandma. This picture was taken. When I look at the DVDs and I see her smiling and playing and see her, hear her voice. When I look at the pictures, her personality comes out, her kindness. That's what I remember about April. That's something that I can't never forget. You know, she, she's no longer with us. pictures of the body at the hospital, the one that I had to go over and identify. I wouldn't wish something like that happened on any mother. Just have to go, ident go to a hospital and then pull a sheet down on them and there lays your child, lifeless and cold, 
no life in that body, just there. And then I have of her in a casket. To me, this is just a shell. All I have left to remember my daughter by is pictures and videos. That's what I have left. I have no child. I have no grandchildren. My whole family's just devastated. Even her brother, he, he was small when she died and they were the only two I had. April was my firstborn, my only daughter. I don't think she died at the lake. I really don't because I don't get, I go out there and, and it's almost like calming, a calming film. I've been down to the water's edge. I've put my feet in the water. My daughter didn't die at that lake. But there was another place that we went through and I got fear when we started to that place. I got immediate fear when I was driving. I was gripping onto the steering wheel so hard that my knuckles were white and my fingernails had cut into my hands. I think she died there and was transported out there. Emergency room doctor that night gave me a statement on recording and the statement said it was the consensus in the emergency room that night that she did not drown because the body was supposed to have been floating on top of the water. And I said, supposedly, because nobody seen her except for some juveniles that was out there. And they were the ones that brought her to the hospital. I said, who died first? Did April die first or did Tim die? He said, she died first. And I said, how long was she dead? 10, 15 minutes? He said, no, a long time. And the reason I asked that was because I could not fathom the way my child was that she watched somebody die, somebody drown. Drowning is horrible. And I just couldn't imagine her seeing somebody drown. April was a lifeguard. She was an A student. She was a good girl. I remember her, she was a sweet girl. I remember going to prom with her. She was so happy. All the things that happened that night, they said she was drinking and playing around in the water at the lake. There's no possible way that anybody could see a body floating, even 15 feet out. Things just didn't add up. And yet, two teenagers pulled her out of the dock. Just doesn't add up. There's no way 230 pound teenagers are going to be able to lift a dead body that's 160 pounds up out of that water. That just completely blows that story out of the water. She was dry within 15 minutes of them finding her and bringing her body to the hospital. Her hair was dry. The fact that she was an excellent swimmer, and I mean, who's gonna be swimming out there in that ice cold lake, you know, in early May? The water is freezing. You sit down and look at this case. There are so many things that stand out to you that you just, it's unbelievable that it has went this long with all these questions unanswered for her. It's sad. It's always been a black cloud over the area. It's, you get so many people that, that want to say so much and then they'll say something to you, but they don't want to go on record and say anything. The whole community just seems like they don't really want to talk about it. I know that Sharon's had some threatening phone calls. I know that uh, we've had some gunshots go off by our home, cars pulling in front of the house and, you know, shooting off gunshots and things. And it's just, you know, it's part of it. And I've learned just by helping her over the years that you have to be brave. 
him stand by wouldn't have been in that water. His family says he's deathly afraid of water. He wouldn't get in the swimming pool at the carriage house when they had a party over there because he was afraid of water. But he drowned with his new shoes on his feet in 15 feet of water. April was only about three foot, four foot. Could swim like a fish. Okay, so right now we're out here at the dock area. This is where Sharon's daughter, April, was found in this area. And then Timothy was found right out here, okay. right out there. So our plan is to come back later tonight. We'll run a spirit box session out here. We brought the SLS camera. So we'll see if we can pick up on any energy or spirits out here or make communication with April and Tim and hopefully figure out what happened that night. So you definitely get a darker energy right here. I mean, it's almost like a sad energy. This is the first time I've been out on this dock. So it's a big thing for me to come out here because I have such a fear of water. Mm -hmm. So I know she's with me or I wouldn't be strong enough to even walk out on here. He was in 15 feet of water and April was supposed to be in four foot from the shore and about three to four foot of water supposed to have been. You cannot come to that bank and look down in this water and see a body floating in the water. But I don't see how they could take her up over those rocks. Pull her out of the water and take her up over those rocks and put her in a truck is, with her size and their sizes. It's just impossible. And there was way more rocks, these type of rocks, on the bank but now they've come and they've redone it and made a little walking trail and all this other stuff, so they took some of it out. You see over here at the, the bend, as you go around the corner there, you see how all those rocks are right there? That's what this looked like over here. It's terrifying at night. I think that's what we'll do is we'll come back and do the spirit box session at nighttime. Yeah. Can you imagine somebody pulling somebody out of the water dead, naked, Not too and, car and carrying them up over all them rocks like they lay there right now. Nope. Can't do it. So being out here for the first time, what's kind of your feelings? It's overwhelming. My chest is hurting. My body feels like electricity's running through it. It's a lot of sadness, a lot of dread. It's not my favorite place to be. And you've never been on this dock since? I haven't. This is the first time I've walked out on this dock. I've always went over there and stood and looked down in there you know, or climbed down the rocks and touched the water, but not on this dock. And I'm deathly afraid of water. And I know she's with me or I wouldn't be standing here as strong as I am right now. Mm -hmm. Definitely get a heavy feeling out here, I think. Yeah. When you come out here, what information have you gotten? When I came out here with the psychic, I have a psychic on my team. We come out here several times over the past couple of weeks to see if we could get some evidence. And um, we've definitely gotten some EVP evidence, which she'll be coming out here tomorrow to tell you all about that if you want to know about it. Um, there's something not good out here and you will definitely feel it she sent me a, a message on facebook and told me that april's with me all the time and she watches me sleep at night and i already knew that so the big question is how did they both end up in the water dead exactly right timmy stambo could not swim 
he was d more afraid of water than I, than I am. And he was found out there, his feet back toward the bank, like you just dove in. But his hands were next to his body. And that come from the guy that pulled him out of the water. I did get to see a picture of him that the coroner took. His body looked totally different than April's. He was red, yellow, his lips were so blue they looked black. And when I seen him at the funeral home, I did go to his, over there and pay my respects to him. And I seen a knot on his forehead. His sister showed me a knot that was at the back of his head. And his fingers looked like he had been in a fight. Uh, on the left hand, they looked like they was lapped over and he had bruises. His autopsy said that he drowned too, that he was pulled out of the water 15 feet by the rescue squad. It's a mother's feeling, a, a gut instinct and a heart instinct. But there's a lot of unanswered questions and 29 years later, you can't get no answers. Somebody put clothes on her in the emergency room. I have no idea who done that. The pictures, the clothes are dry. Her hair was dry, no water around the gurney. But they said she drowned. And the police report, all they could think about was what I was saying and who I was talking to. And they were more worried about what I, who I was talking to, trying to get answers myself as to really investigate the case. The clothes that I saw her in over at the hospital when they pulled that sheet down off of her, I just pulled it down to the waist. I could feel shorts on her through the sheet. And the shirt that they had on the body said, you suck. That shirt was a small shirt. It wasn't one that would even fit on April. It was like they was trying to make a statement, you suck. These is April's belongings. When she left the house that night, she had on this shirt. As you can see, it's tattered and ripped, and Kentucky State Police has cut places out in it to do samples. These shorts was put on the body. Somebody clothed the body at the hospital. As you can see, they're not Levi shorts, and they're not cutoffs. This is the small shirt that they squeezed on April's body there at the, at the hospital. I have no idea whose shirt this is but it seems to me like they were sending a message. The stains is vomitous material and blood that was uh, coming out of her. Ronald said that he tried to do CPR, but he had to quit because she started vomiting. But this shirt and these shorts were dry at the hospital. The bra and the belt was not April's. I don't know what deceased person that belonged to. The panties were April's. As you can see, they're ripped. First autopsy report said that they were white. They're not white, they're green. Her Louis Vuitton purse, I took possession of it at the hospital. It has been ripped. Her stains on it. Her wallet. And in her wallet, everything is just like it was when she put it in there. This is a little makeup case with her makeup in it. Everything that April would carry with her every day. Her little watch that she had. It Broke too, as well. It was the hair class that she had in her hair that night. It was found on the bank by Tim's brother, Terry, and he brought it to the uh, funeral home, and he said, Sharon, did this belong to April? I said, yes, it was. It'll remain her stuff until I pass away, and then I don't know what will become of it when after that, but I hope somebody just cherishes it. 
maybe a fight ensued out there and probably it wasn't probably intentional. I'm gonna go out there to kill April. Maybe a fight took out and it just got carried awake and they got scared and didn't know what to do and put her in the water. But I don't think the fight was at the Paintsville Lake either. I think it was at an area called Concord. It was no race, abandoned racetrack. Michelle was in the truck with her, with uh, Chris when they brought April to the hospital. M Michelle told that uh, they were at Concord racetrack area and April, they was playing music and April was on the back of Timmy's truck, a tailgate, and jumped off, landed in a mud hole and said, let's go to the Paintsville Lake. Michelle also told me when I asked her, I said, Michelle, I want to know one thing. What was the look on April's face when you all got her out of that water? And she looks at me like this and she holds, hangs her head down and she says, I didn't see her face. And I said, Michelle, you didn't see her face? No, I couldn't. I said, why? She said, for the bag over her head, the plastic bag over her head. According to the reports, there was a whole group of people out there. The music that was playing was not coming from them in the parking lot. It was coming from a houseboat that was out on the lake. Some of the kids told me that there was a girl that said that uh, she, excuse me for saying this, she beat that to death in the water. Maybe a fight that got out of hand and she was killed and they didn't know what to do with the body and try to dispose of it, make it look like something else. After April was buried four and a half months, and I had looked at the autopsy that the state of Kentucky done, it didn't sit right with me. There was something off. So I paid to have another one done out of state. It was done in Nashville, Tennessee. The body was transported down there by Johnson Preston Funeral Home. The lady done the autopsy, Julia Gooden. And she sent the autopsy report as well as pictures of the body. Where she told me she couldn't go, come to any other conclusion than drowning because there was bones and body parts missing from the body. The ithoid moan, the larynx, the upper airways, all that was missing. It was not in the body. She noted it as unidentified. Those are important as to strangulation, suffocation, drowning. Does anybody ever gave you a reason why those parts were missing? From what I gather from other coroners, when a body is brought into a hospital like April's, the coroner is supposed to take multiple pictures, tons and tons and tons of pictures of every direction, turn that body over, take pictures of the back, everything that was not done. There was two pictures taken of her body at the hospital, one from the left side, one from the right side, from the waist up. Is that when that body went down there in that body bag with that toe tag on it, the minute they received that body, they were to unzip that bag, get that body out and immediately put a, issue a number for that body and start taking pictures. They, no pictures. Police reports, handwritten by the Kentucky State Police Officer, Officer Gorell, says I compared notes. I called the coroner, J.R. Frisbee, and compared notes. One, if not both of the bodies would have to be taken up for comparison autopsies. Was something going on that he wanted to look at extra? Was he thinking the same way I was? Because I had done had it set up to have April's body taken for a second autopsy when he made this statement, but I never let him know. Nobody knew that that autopsy was taking place in Nashville, Tennessee until it was done over with and she was buried again. But why would the investigating officer say that the bodies would have to be brought back up for comparison autopsies. That piece of paper on there that's got April Pennington's name on it, that they got all that stuff wrote in there, that they call an autopsy report, 
they got to prove to me that that's a report on my daughter. There is no pictures identifying my daughter in Louisville. I seen her mouth busted. She had a place on her upper lip. I seen a faint bruise around her neck. I seen a bruise on her cheek. And those shows in these pictures, I mean, they show in the pictures. The neck, the bruise on the cheek, and the busted mouth, it's in the pictures. There wasn't no places on her arms or her hands. They were just as smooth as they could be. People, when you drown, you're grasping for stuff. You're fighting to get out of that water. Poodling of the blood. When a body dies, the poodling of the blood settles to the lower extremities. The poodling of the blood was on the lower back here. instead of being on the front side. I asked Chris and Michelle and them where that shirt was and they said they don't know. I was vivid that I got that shirt back because that's the last shirt that she had on when she left the house. It showed up a couple of weeks later after April died in the back of her dad's car and there laid that shirt and they brought it to me immediately. I think that Timothy was probably trying to help her. And God only knows, if somebody would have been fighting April, he would have stepped in and said, let's quit, stop right now. I'm fighting for April and Timmy. And all I want is answers. I want somebody to come and tell the truth about what happened out there besides all this nonsense that they've been telling all these years. And you see this? I don't have her anymore. I don't have grandchildren by her anymore. I don't get to see her walk down the aisle, graduate from school, have kids. You all, and you know who I'm talking to at the Painful Lake that night. You have children, you have grandchildren. You're still walking and breathing. April is not here. All I have is these pictures and her voice. And with the spirit box, what's your hope and to learn from the spirit box session? I hope that April comes through and I hope that she tells us what happened and who's responsible. And in my heart, in my soul, and in my gut, I know she will. My beautiful angel April, my life has changed a lot since you left. All I have left is the memories and pictures. From the time you were born until the time that you left us to become an angel, you brought me such great joy in those 16 years. Things that I always remember is your beauty and your smile, your joy and the most simple things that I had to give you. I wished I could have gave you more. The most difficult times for me is the holidays, Christmases, Thanksgivings, beauty of life and what it had to offer. Your love and compassion for the elderly and handicapped also. People who were less fortunate than you. It always amazed me. I didn't get to see you graduate or walk down the aisle of a church in a wedding dress. And I often wonder if you would have had children. Your life was taken too soon. A lot of unanswered questions and what if still remain 29 years later. Could I have changed things that night? Could I have done something different? I don't know. All that I'm sure of is that the day or night when God calls me home, you'll come and escort me there. Then we'll be together again. When you visit me in spirit, 
I feel the love. Until we meet in heaven, love, Mom. Soon after the tragic deaths of April Pennington and Timothy Stanbo, rumors began to spread around the small town of Paintsville, Kentucky. At the time, those rumors involved one 14-year-old classmate of April's, Don Shaw. Don has never spoken publicly about that fateful night. Don has agreed to take part in this series. I decided to make this video and tell my side of the story about being accused of killing Michael Pennington. I was 14 years old. I was a freshman in high school. And when it happened was, honestly, I had had sex with her boyfriend when they were broken up. And she found out about it and tormented me the whole year. The whole year. Like, I was scared to death of her. And she was bigger than me. And she was meaner than me. And I had seen her do things that scared me to death. I had decided she was either going to beat me up or I was going to beat her up. Something had to give. I was just tired of it. She tormented me all year long. Well, we got down there and we fought. And I ended up beating her up. And I bloodied her nose. And she started crying and screaming for Mark to help her. And I stood up and I reached my hand out to her like this. I helped her up. And I said, now this is done. This has been on long enough. This is done. That's settled. Agreed. And we shook hands and agreed. And like three weeks later, her and Timmy drowned at the lake. I had went to stay the night with my friend, Shelly. And she snuck out of the house with her boyfriend at the time. She had told everybody in town that I called and said that I had killed April at the lake. That moment on, you know, everybody thought that I killed April. They really did. This is the first time I've ever spoken publicly about this. Thanks for listening. Early the next morning, my brothers and I make our way back to Paintsville Lake. Don has agreed to meet me alone in a public area. Don is supposed to meet me out here this morning. She agreed to do an interview. So hopefully she shows up a little bit nervous just in case. I don't know how this is gonna go, but I'm going to hang out here and see if she shows up. I met April in my eighth grade year of school. April was a little older than us, than the girls in my class. And, but we all ran around together. We were like 13, 14, 15 years old. The April I knew was not like the, the April her family knew, apparently from what I've been told. April and Jason had gotten to an argument and Jason and I kind of had relations and that's where April and I fell apart. She confronted me about it and I told her that, you know, yeah, it happened and she called me a liar. I was afraid of April. She was a year older than me. She outweighed me by probably 30, 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. She intimidated me a lot. Um, I never really been in a real fight other than my sister. And she bullied me all year, my freshman year. She chased me around, threatened to burn me, threatened to uh, beat me with sticks and swords. And so that was pretty much how my whole freshman year went. You know, duck and dodge, trying to hide from her and avoiding her. and. Then a couple of weeks before her and Timmy actually died out here, um, we were out that night. It was like three weeks, three or four weeks before they died out here. And, um, and they kept like coming up behind us and you know, flipping their lights and revving up their motor and pulling up beside us, you know, and she was screaming things at me and derogatory names and things like that. And, and I just told them, I said, I'm sick of this. You know, I had me a little buzz and, you know, I told her, I said, I'm sick of this. Either you're going to whoop me or I'm going to whoop you. I'm, I'm tired of running. That's just all there is. I said, just go down the road and fight it out. So we did. And I ended up beating her up pretty bad. 
and she was screaming and, and I was scared. I, and the only thing that was going through my head is if, if I let her on top of me, she's gonna make me deaf, <laughs> you know? And, but I bloodied her nose, you know? And I, you know, I, I stood up and I helped her up and uh, we shook hands and we agreed that, that that was where it was gonna end, that it, that was, we had fought it out and, and it was over at that point. The next day we actually had McDonald's together after school, you know, and everything was fine. And then that night here at the lake, they died and my entire life changed. I was at West Van Lear. I just died night with a friend of mine. Her name was Shelly And she was gonna sneak out with her boyfriend that night. And her grandpa, she lived with her grandma and grandpa. And uh, her grandpa was in the hospital. <laughs> get crazy. Her grandfather was in the hospital and her grandma had went to stay with them. So it was just the three of us girls there. And when Shelly left, I just said I would stay there with Kelly, her little sister, you know. And well, we went to sleep, and sometime in the middle of the night, Kelly came in, or Shelly came home and woke me up. And she was like, Dawn, you gotta get up. You know, I gotta talk to you. And I'm like, what's, what's wrong? You know, I thought something was wrong with her grandpa. And uh, she told me that April had died out here at the lake, that they were in the plaza, and they saw Timmy's truck going through you know, going by the plaza, there's the main street that runs in front of the plaza from here to the hospital. And then that there was like six or seven police cars after it and that they followed them to the hospital and that Chris and Michelle had April in the back of the truck bed. And I called over to Jason's house because Jason, you know, and April were boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, for so long. And I, I figured if anything had happened, Jason would know about it. Well. Eileen, Jason's mom, answered the phone and I asked her, I said, is Jason home? And she said, no, well, why, what's going on? And I told her, you know, it was on and I'd heard April had died at the lake. And the only thing she said to me is, did you kill her? And I said, no, I didn't kill her, you know? Mm. Well, the next morning, it, I mean, it was just like all I heard, all I heard. And for weeks, every day I would go to school, there would be people lined up like all the way from McDonald's into the Johnson Central High School. Sharon had to hire anybody that, you know, she had put it out, anybody that could beat me up, she would hire them, she would pay them. Somebody had came to my house in the middle of the night and killed all my rabbits. We had trees around our house, pinned their bodies up with no heads to the trees around our house. Somebody sent a dozen black roses to my house that said, you'll be next, love April. I can remember my 16th birthday, you know, most kids have their sweet 16. I sat at home on the couch because I was afraid to leave. I don't, it's hard to talk about. Um, I, I hate that it happened, but I didn't have anything to do with it. And I just wish people would really know that and know how this whole thing has impacted not just their life, but my life, the life of my children, and even now the life of my granddaughter, because we're constantly aware of what's going on and even the conversations you and I have had. I was, I was nervous about coming out here. I don't know what I'm stepping into out here, mm -hmm. you know? If it's some kind of trap, it's a small town. Mm -hmm. People don't forget stuff like that. Especially when nobody's ever convicted or nothing. It's just, just like, there was a lot of work done but because they kept coming up with like no answers, it was like just kind of brushed under the rug, I feel like. And I don't blame her. Mm -hmm. I would do the same thing. I would never stop. If I felt like somebody hurt my child, I'd never stop. But I, in the same, I can say, April and Timmy weren't the only ones that lost their lives. I lost my whole childhood. Mm -hmm. And it's something I'll never get back. You know, because you ran around with the same people that were there that night, right? Yeah. What were kind of some of the stories being told as far as what happened? 
I was best friends with Michelle. It was her and Chris. Chris and Michelle is who I was told drove Timmy's truck, got April out of the water and drove Timmy's truck to the hospital. And when they went to look for him, they found April floating on the water. I begged all of them, if, if nothing happened, stand up for me, tell them I wasn't there. You all know I wasn't there, you know. Why won't y'all talk to the police? Why won't your parents let you talk to the police? What are you hiding? What are you covering up? And I don't know if they are, and I'm not saying that they are, mm -hmm. but I never understood that myself. I could see if it was, you know, accidental drowning, you know, those things happen. It's rare for two people to be right next to the bank and accidentally drown. But it was all the other stuff that happened that throws a lot of doubt into it. Like the clothes that were put on April when she was taken to the hospital. Is there anybody in that group of people that were out here that night that would have had anything against April or Timmy? No, not that I know of. You know, we, everybody was friends and family, you know. Mm -hmm. The reason I think that it, it was just an accident is Timmy couldn't swim. April could swim. April was lifeguard. But from the things that they told me is that Timmy had like fishing line or something around around his feet or I don't know, got tangled up in fishing line. And I don't know if maybe April was trying to help him, you know, and maybe he knocked her out unconscious because Michelle said that they had drank a lot of vodka that night. There was a very little alcohol mm -hmm. in April's system and very little water in her lungs. You had him in the water struggling. You had her trying to save him. There's going to be a lot of splashing. There's going to be a lot of screaming, probably. Mm -hmm. We had people over here at the houseboats. We had another car that was sitting right up here. And nobody went there and nobody heard them until they walked back down there and seen her floating in the water. You know, he did bring up your name. And I don't know if that's how you got brought into this, being questioned by law enforcement. I don't know. They just showed up at my house one day, you know, and told me that they were state police and FBI. Mm -hmm. It scared me to death, and I've been in trouble, you know, and, and I've struggled with addictions and been in rehabs, you know, and it's taken me, I'm 45 years old now, it's taken me this long to get clean and to try to get my life going in some kind of direction, positive direction. This whole thing has just, like, consumed my life. You know, I, I can't even get jobs at certain places in town mm -hmm. because of their family, people they know. Well, that's the, that's the girl that killed April. I'm not the girl that killed April. I wasn't even here. I wish that they could find the answers that they're looking for. I really do. Mm -hmm. And I also wish that they and the whole community would realize I didn't even have anything to do with this. I was not here. The problem I have with it is the other things that happened afterwards. This shirt, if you could pin it on anybody, like, you know, somebody had a shirt like this, and this was the shirt that she was taking to the hospital in, and not the shirt that she was wearing that night. And of course, it says you suck, and then I'll try to hold it down for you. But uh, does this shirt look familiar? It's Chris's. Whose? It's Chris's. Chris? Who's Chris? Chris. He's the one that took her to the hospital. He used to wear it shirt all the time. So, okay. I don't know. Because that was one of the big questions as far as who the hell shirt is this, you know? He used to wear it all the time. It's the first time, you know, that I've even, I don't know. Maybe he took it off of her if she didn't have, I don't. I don't know why she would have been in here in, in naked or with, without a shirt on. You yeah, know. and we have, the, like I said, the clothes that she was wearing that night, we have those too. Those showed up in the back of her dad's car. And I do have a couple of pictures I wanted to show you of April and kind of just get. Are they the autopsy, autopsy pictures? One of them is. Can I get your, I'll show you the one from that, you know, April that night first. Looking at this, 30 years later, you know, not you back when this first happened, but 30 years later, what, what kind of goes through your mind? 
it's just sad that two young people lost their lives. It's just sad. Mm -hmm. And the effect that it's had on everybody else. I wish that their family could find peace, regardless of what it is. And if I had anything to do with it, I would sit here and say the same thing because I'm a mother mm -hmm. and I know how that must hurt. But I didn't have anything to do with it. And I don't hold any grudges towards their family. I don't ha have any hard feelings. I used to, but I understand that now. Mm -hmm. As an adult, you know, thinking with a clear mind, if I felt like somebody killed my child or hurt my child, I'd never stop. Honestly. So. It's just sad. Mm -hmm. It is really sad. And this is April, you know, that night that she died. And you can see the shirt. If she was wet, why is her hair so curly? I don't know. That's kind of the thing. If she was found in the water, her clothes were dry, her hair was dry. It doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, I don't, I didn't, I've never heard any of that either. I just found that, yeah, was told she was found in the water and like her and Timmy were in separate locations. How do two young, healthy adults who weren't super intoxicated end up dead in the water? Even if I wanted to hurt somebody, I was 14 years old. Right. Weighed 115 pounds. Couldn't have a grown man and a, and a girl that outweighed me by at least 30 pounds. I don't even see how it would be physically possible. I don't think anybody will ever know what really happened mm -hmm. outside of it was just a tragic accident. I don't know. People don't, don't really understand the extent and the effect that this has had on my life. My entire life, I've looked over my shoulder because I don't know who's, what kind of crazy is going to come up behind me. With storms rolling into the area, we've decided to end the interview. Shortly after April and Timothy's deaths, Don was interviewed extensively by law enforcement and was also administered a polygraph test. Investigators believe Don was being truthful during her polygraph test. Later that night, we headed back to the lake to continue our investigation. Okay, so we're out here at Paintsville Lake. This is the area where April supposedly drowned in this area. We're gonna run a spirit box session and see if we can get any information as far as what happened to them that night. We're attempting to communicate with April Pennington or Timothy Stambo. We're out at the lake right now. Can you hear us, yes or no? April, if you can see or hear us, we've got your mother out here with us. April, we're trying to figure out what happened to you out here at the lake that night. Did you die out here, yes or no? Tim Stambo, can you hear us? You hear he's here or something like that? Yes. Timothy, were you and April murdered out here? Can you tell us who hurts you? You hear that? Mm -hmm. You hear what I heard? Mm -hmm. April, this is your mom. Can you come and talk to us? We're out at the lake.
We need to hear from you. Okay. Hold her shirt up real quick. I did too. April, the night that you died, somebody put this shirt on you. Can you tell us who put this shirt on you? April, how did you die? It's not like the male voice is coming through. Tim, is that you? Yes or no? April, do you know whose shirt this was? Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. Yes, that was April's voice. I recognize my daughter's voice anywhere. That was her voice. April, can you tell me did Don Shaw hurt you, yes or no? April, was your death an accident, yes or no? April, why were your panties ripped? Choked. Choked. How did Tim's body end up in the water? Did Tim die from drowning? Yes or no? Yeah. And that, everything goes along with kind of what we know because we know Tim died from a drowning from his autopsy. April's was a dry drowning, right? Mm. April, what was used to kill you? How are you guys doing? We're hanging in there. How are you? Good. So I wanted to touch base with you guys. I've spent the last week and a half going over all the police reports, witness statements, autopsies, and then of course the spirit box session. Went over all that information. Got an idea of what I feel comfortable with what happened that night. And like I told you when we first agreed to look into April's case, it's important for us to stay neutral to the situation. That way we wouldn't lean one way or the other and give our honest opinion. As far as Don Shaw was concerned, if she had anything to do with what happened that night, the thing I was having such a hard time with is we couldn't find anybody that was out there that night to put Don out there that night. Don's polygraph test that she passed that so I think it's safe to say that Don probably wasn't out there that night. So that's kind of my feeling. I don't think Don had anything to do with it. The whole goal was to set out and find out, you know, was April and Timothy murdered that night or was it an accidental death? And I looked at some other case reports that dealt with teenagers. What was a little bit different about this case versus some of those other ones is you often see when you're taking witness statements from teenagers. Their statements will be all over the place. With this one, reading through all the reports that I have, they look like they are all pretty consistent as far as what happened that night. 
there was no visible trauma that they could see where she was severely beaten or even choked. Over the spirit box, when I laid everything out, it, it almost looks like it talks about Tim falling in the water. And then I believe, you know, April lifeguard mode kicked in. She went right in the water to help him. I'm just trying to go with what we have. Right. I mean, we appreciate that. And, you know, as a paranormal investigator, you often look at the history and then your evidence and you try to piece it all together. We found out that the shirt that was on April came from Chris that night. And it's possible that he, you know, seeing that she didn't have a shirt, took his shirt off, put it on her. And then that could explain why that shirt was on What's April. I just want to find out what happened. And a long time ago, I believe that Tim fell in the water and April went in after him. She's a hero if that's what happened. Yeah. Giving all the reports, there was really no conflicting witness statements. They all pretty much went down the same road. Polygraph tests that the witnesses were given, all of them passed their polygraphs. There was nobody in that group that we know that was there that night would want to hurt April. So just looking at all the information, the spirit box and all that stuff, that's kind of what I feel happened is for all this to happen, you have to have all these tragic events all happen at once. So if you take one of those variables out of the situation, it's possible that this could have been a completely different outcome. So my gut and the evidence is telling me that somehow Timothy ended up in the water. April went in to try to save him, somehow became unconscious that would lean more a little bit towards the dry drowning side of things. And then everything else after that can kind of just be explained through the witness statements. In my heart that April, you know, did the best that she could do to try to save Timothy. Oh, I have one thing to say. If Tim fell in the water and April went out there to try to save him and she gave her life trying to save him, then that makes her a hero. Mm -hmm. She's a hero to us. So you might want to make sure that you put that on the, the thing. Not very many teenagers, period, would give their life to try to save somebody. And that tells you what kind of person April was. Well, I appreciate everything that y'all have done. Thank you all so much for the and, help. And, you know, like I, I thought a long time ago that maybe Tim fell in and she went in to save him. So that makes her a hero. Mm -hmm. Thank sure. you all for coming down and doing all this and telling April's story. I'm very proud of both of my children, April and her brother, who went over and served for this country, seeing things that we couldn't even imagine. What an honor it was to take part in this. Are you trusting in us to tell her story? We can't thank you guys enough. This is, this is for you, Josh. <laughs> You're thank welcome. Thank you so much. All right, you we guys. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye -bye. Oh, get you and your little friends together, honey. We're going down to the flower. All right, hold on. Wait a minute, hold it. Hold right there. Hold it, honey. Were you trying to No, I'm getting a close up of you, honey. I'm getting a close up of you, so I want you on there a few minutes. That's weird. This is Oh, my God.